Pastor Ken, wanting to talk to you a little bit about um, marriage and about uh, a wedding at Standing Stone Bible and a little bit about my positions in that. Um, you know, there's a lot of confusion over that. There's a lot of options over that. There are a lot of people today that are discarding the idea of marriage. Uh, there are a lot of people that come to me with all kinds of different ideas about a ceremony. Um, a lot of people have varying ideas about um, what a wedding and what a marriage should look like. Uh, they've been jaded by the culture. They've been jaded by friends. Uh, they have been jaded by the home they grew up in. Uh, some are running from, they're seeking a, an, an escape from, they're seeking a rescue from, uh, from a previous situation or from a, a bad home life or from uh, just being oh, maybe desperate or even um, uh, wanting to get out of a previous um, arrangement made living with friends and they're just tired of that. I mean, there's any number of and all kinds of reasons why people uh, do what they do, uh, why people get married, why people don't get married, why marriages work, why marriages don't work, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, again, I, w I want to just talk to you a little bit in, the, in these uh, six sessions or so about uh, what marriage is, uh, what uh, the Standing Stone uh, philosophy is, uh, what weddings should look like, and what even some of my own preferences and sometimes even my own convictions are. I want to reveal those to you. Uh, you know, you're coming to watch these because probably I've sent you to watch these. You've come to me and you said, you know, we're interested in uh, uh, getting married and we're interested in standing stone uh, uh, doing that. We had a phone call just within the last couple of days. Somebody we didn't know called and said uh, they're wanting to get married and they're looking for a church and they're looking for a pastor to do so. Uh, you know, the question is, well, do you not have a church and why do you not have a church and why do you want a church, a wedding and all those kinds of things. So, you know, in, in, in a short conversation, it's hard to uh, address all those things. So part of what we are, what I'm wanting to do anyway with this is give you a tool. I want you to be able to look through these things, these uh, videos and get an idea before you come about what what the values are that we hold and what the standards are that we have and uh, whether we are a fit for you or not. And, you know, we would pray that we are a fit for you. But the same point is, I mean, I've had to tell people no. People have come to me. We want to we want to get married, and I have to say no, and I've, I've done that. And some people come back to me and thank me. Some people have gone on and got married and done well, even despite my initial no, and I think there's reasons why they've done well. Uh, some people have uh, done so, and then their, their marriage cratered and crashed. And, and so again, I mean, after years and years and even decades of experience in all this, I do think I've got some wisdom that is helpful. And so here you are, you're coming, you're looking at these, and you're considering uh, a marriage, you're considering a wedding. Um, you have all the best intentions. You, you are madly in love. You're passionately in love. You and uh, the one that you're designed to marry are just... Uh, you, 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 it's a dream made in heaven. Uh, you are uh, convinced that against all odds you can make this work. Well, you know, that, that's been true with like you know, 99 out of 100 people. And yet divorce is 50% or some number like that. So again, all the best intentions don't work uh, without a good solid foundation. You think about building a house. You know, he talks about that in Matthew chapter 7. Um, you build a house, but if you don't build it on a rock, the storms will come. And by the way, the storms will come. Your 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 health might be perfect now. Your parents, everything's fine. Uh, your job, everything's fine. The world around you is pretty idyllic. That doesn't mean it's not going to change tomorrow. And storms will come. And your marriage will make it if it's on a rock, if it's anchored to a solid footing. And so part of what we do in pre-wedding counseling and part of what we're after about even in a wedding is developing and affirming and solidifying that rock. And so that's part of what this is about. This is about getting a head start on all that. So watch these through. Uh, and then if you have questions, call me. I'm, I'm glad to sit down and, and talk to you. Uh, know this, though, that I am bound by this, right? Now, again, I, you know, I've got opinions. My opinions are my opinions. And you can throw those out. You can do whatever you want with those. But what God says, when God gives a principle or a truth here in the, in the book, I, I'm bound by that. You may not feel that same way, 
that's not okay, but I am bound. And so there are some things I will not do. Even though you plead and even though it, everybody else is doing it, there's some things I will not do. Well, that's kind of what I'm going to explain to you. It's kind of what I'm going to share with you, uh, even in these videos. All right. Um, this one is um, number one. Marriage Standing Stone Bible, session number one. All I want to just talk to you about just why why get married? Uh, why have a wedding? Why get married? And again, that's, it's, it's pretty foundational. It's pretty uh, basic. But again, I believe the, the God set it up that way. Uh, you know, we, we read in Genesis chapter uh, 2 that God made Adam. It says, uh, he formed him from the dust of the earth. He breathed into his brussels, uh, uh, nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. The Lord planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man. So he made the man out there. He created the man. He breathed his breath into him. And that's what life is. Uh, uh, we're made out of dust. We're made out of clay with God's breath. When we die, that breath leaves. The breath returns to God, and God deals with us, sends us to the place appropriate, and we return back to the dust from whence we came. So we're a dualism. The only reason we have life is because God gives life. Well, what's it say there? God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and he put the man there. So he makes man out there, then he makes a house, and then he takes the man, and he puts the man in the house, right? And the man has duties, you know, he names all the animals and all those kinds of things. And God says in verse 18, this is Genesis 2.18, It is not good that man be alone. I will make a helper comparable to him. So there we go, right to it. God says, I am going to make a team player comparable, not identical, comparable to him. And so you, you, you know the story that God then, uh, after naming the animals, he puts... Uh, uh, Adam into a, a, a deep sleep and he forms from one of his ribs a woman and he brings her to him. God walks Eve to Adam. The Lord caused a deep sleep to fall and close up the ribs, the rib which the Lord had taken from the man. He made a woman and he brought her to the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she's taken out a man. We're going to be made one. We're bound together. We're knit together. He names her. She takes his name. Therefore, God says this, and he says this in a number of places, not just here. This is the first. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother, be joined, that's a wedding, to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Now they come together, and it's not just sexually come together. It's mentally, it's vision-wise, it's uh, uh, passion-wise, it's work-wise. They're team, team, team. And they were both naked, verse 25, and man, man and his wife. The man and his wife. And we're not ashamed. Well, all right, now, right there, there's just a whole bunch of things, right? I mean, one is, it's a, it's a male and a female. It's uh, two humans, but one's male, one's female. Uh, God uh, brings them together. God walks her. Uh, he utters vows of commitment. God hearkens to those. Uh, it is that um, it's starting a new family unit. You leave father and mother. You, you're bound here before God, and then you are to, uh, to, to work together in a new family unit. So it's an establishment of a new, new family unit, and uh, they're, they're, they're naked and not ashamed. There's, there's uh, intimacy without, without shame and without guilt. Uh, that's that's God. That's how it all started. Well, obviously, things went south on us, right, because uh, man sinned and all. But let me just jump to what Jesus says in Matthew 19 then, which really affirms what uh, Luke chapter, uh, excuse me, Genesis chapter uh, 2 just said. So they came to Jesus. I'm in uh, Matthew 19, verse 3, Matthew 19. The Pharisees also came to him, testing him, saying to him, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? For any reason. Okay, now they, they think they've got reasons. There's a feud between Pharisees and Sadducees, and some think for any reason, some think for just very narrow reasons. And they came to Jesus, which side are you on? Jesus doesn't side with either one of them. He says, have you not read, have you not read Genesis 2, what, which we just read? Have you not read that? Do you understand that? That he who made them at the beginning, right, made them male, female, just two genders, just two, and said, here's what God said, for this reason man shall leave his father and mother, be joined to his wife, and the two shall be one flesh. That's back to Genesis 2. He said, have you not read what God said, what God's will is, what God's way is, what God's rule is? Have you not read that? Do you not get that? Verse 6, 
God, Jesus adds this, so then they are no longer two but one. Okay? A wedding makes two into one. A wedding melds you together. So, what, you know what divorce is going to do? Divorce is going to rip that apart. Divorce is going to take one and divide it up. So now you have two halves. That's why divorce is so, so, so terrible, so destructive. That's why Jesus takes a, such a stand against it. They're no longer two but one. And what, listen to this. What God has joined together, let not man separate. That's the answer. Divorce for any reason? He didn't side with either one. Narrow, well, these are these two or three reasons, or broad, if she burns a toast. He didn't side with either one of those. He said, what God joins, don't put us under. Don't, don't tear apart, right? Well, okay, there's an affirmation of Genesis chapter 2. It's an affirmation of male-female. It's an affirmation of, of, of a wedding being a bonding, being a gluing, being a melding of two into one, and how important it is before God, how important it is to each party, how important it is to society. Marriages are incredibly important. Weddings are incredibly important. All right, uh, let me just give you a couple, three other ideas here. You know, in John chapter 2, it says that there was a wedding in Cana of, of Galilee, uh, John 2, and Jesus went. Now, this is likely a relative of some sort, because Mary, his mother, Mary who burned him, uh, you know, she comes to him, she said, Father, they ran out of wine, what do we do? Apparently, Joseph is dead. Jesus, the firstborn son, becomes the head of the home. Mary comes to him. So Mary's got some authority, got some, well, let me say it this down another way. Mary's got some responsibilities in his wedding, so it's apparently a family. I, you know, I mean, who is it? I mean, is, is it one of his sisters? marrying another guy, whatever. But they come to Jesus and he said, you know, the, the whole turning the water into wine. And so it says, um, oh, let me get to where I need to be here. Okay, uh, John chapter two, uh, Jesus says, uh, you know, get 20 or 30 gallons of these big pots, fill them with water and draw some water out and take it to the master. And they took the water and the master tasted the water made the wine and did not know where it came from. The servants knew. The master of the feast called the bridegroom and said, Every man at the beginning sets out the good wine, and then the guests are well drunk, then the inferior. You've kept the good until now. Wow. So Jesus, the very first miracle he does is at a wedding. He attends a wedding, and in the middle of the week, he doesn't go just for an hour. He doesn't just go to the reception, the reception, a whole week long. He's there for the entire week. And he wants this thing to, to go good. He wants it to go well. And apparently, a lot of people have shown, and there's a, there's a big crowd, and they are not well prepared. So partway through the preparation, from, from the initial uh, start of the ceremony until the couple comes out of the bridal chamber to a feast, that's seven days. It's seven days. So in the middle of that, Wednesday or Thursday or whatever the day is, you know, uh, that, that uh, Jesus then makes wine because he wants this to be a rich, wonderful, good. He wants to keep, I'll say it this way, he wants to keep the party going, right? So there's a huge stamp of affirmation. There's a huge stamp of approval from Jesus to weddings and marriages per God. In that, and just even that, that's the first miracle that he does. And what's he stamping? What's he approving? A wedding. Okay, so again, a big, big piece. Um, let me give you a couple more. Ephesians chapter 5, he talks about that a, a husband and a wife, they depict a uh, Jesus and, a, and, a, uh, and his church. So it says um, in uh, Ephesians 5, 21, submit to one another. Life is about submission. Uh, you will submit to your boss. You will submit to, you will submit to death. You will submit to death. You will submit to the government. You will submit to the speed limit or doop, 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 pay a fine, lose points, go to class, lose your license, whatever. You will submit. You will submit to all kinds of things. I mean, if the doctor says you've got cancer and, uh, you know, you say, well, I'm not going to submit to radiation, I'm not going to submit to chemo, well, okay, then submit to death. I get, we, it, it is about submission. You were in the army, I mean, they, they break you down because you're to submit to them. Uh, so marriage is about submission. What's he say here? Submit to one another. In the fear of the Lord. Okay, that's men, males submitting to females, females submitting to males, both ways. Now he slips, he shifts over to a wedding or to a marriage. Verse 22, I'm in Ephesians 5:22. Wives submit to your husbands as to the Lord. All right. So 
marriage is about a husband and a wife, a man and a, ma a male and a female, and it works by submission. So he talks about submitting, and then he goes on in verse 25, he says, husbands, love your wives as Christ. Well, how, did, how much did Christ love his church? He sacrificed for her. So women are to sub be sub in subjection to her, their husband. Husbands are to sacrifice. Both of those ideas are submission. Husbands are to submit in the fact that they sacrifice. They lay their life down. They go the extra mile. They, they fight the extra fight. They, they give and then they give some more to make home safe, to make home blessed, to make home a rich experience, to bless their wife. They sacrifice, they sacrifice, they sacrifice, as did Christ. The wife is subject to her husband as he calls the church to be subject. So let me just jump over to the end of that. He says, um, Ephesians chapter 5, for this, this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Okay? Husband and wife, wedding, marriage, Christ and the church. So one of the reasons that a, a marriage is really important is it depicts a spiritual picture. It depicts something really profound. It, it, it depicts something very special to God. Jesus and his church. Jesus and his bride. Right? So the husband and the wife in a marriage depict Jesus and his bride. He says, um, a great mystery, I speak concerning Christ and the church. Verse 33, nevertheless, each one of you in particular, so love his own wife as himself and let the wife see that she respects her husband. He's to love, she's to respect, both to submit, right? So again, the importance of a wedding to God, the importance of a, of a marriage to God are about pointing to Jesus, pointing to the church, pointing to his great work. So again, we're reminded that Weddings and marriages are incredibly of God and incredibly important to God. Therefore, they're really, really important to us at Standing Stone. They're really, really important to society, and it ought to be really important to you. Let me just give you one more piece, and this is in Revelation chapter 19. It says, um, oh, let me, okay, uh, this, this is a wedding, uh, the backside of a wedding. Remember Jesus? turned water into wine in the middle of that week uh, when the couple comes out of the bridal chamber. And I, this is uh, Jesus and his church again, Revelation 19. And I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude, the sound of many waters, the sound of a mighty thundering saying, Hallelujah for the Lord God on up at the reigns. It's a, it's a glorious, it's a joyous, it's an amazing event. Um, for, let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory. Praise God, hallelujah, glory, glory. But listen, for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his wife has made herself ready. Okay, so now what, what's happening there is we, the, Jesus has come, taking his bride into the bridal chamber. They're coming out of the bridal chamber. This is the end of that marriage week. And the whole crowd erupts into praise and glory and hallelujah. She's all adorned and, and the, the bride and the groom are there. And and to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. So she is uh, a, she's adorned and she's got jewels, she's got a big rock, she's got uh, pearls, she's, got, she's all adorned. The bride is marvelous, the groom is amazing. And he says, um, right, blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. So even when Jesus comes back to set up his kingdom, He's going to turn the millennium actually into an entire thing. It's going to be a marriage supper. It's going to be the reception. It's going to be a huge, huge, an amazing event, the reception. So again, the point there is that marriage is really, really critical to man. It's really critical to mankind. It's really critical to society. It's, it's critical. It begins with a wedding. And a wedding is really, really important. Are you on the right foot? Are we going the right direction? Is there right? Are we, are we doing this for the right reasons? And that's what we're going to talk about in these next um, uh, these next pieces. But for this now, this one number one is why why marriage? Why a wedding? Because they're of God. Because it's God's will. Because it's God's way. And so we want to be about that too. And I want you to be about that. I want you to be about God's will, God's way. I want you to do it that way, that you might have success. That if indeed it is your will that you marry this person, that you don't just do it just to check a box, or that you don't just do it to please mom. But you do it because it is of God, and starting off right, starting off with a good wedding is going to be incredibly helpful, but understanding what you're going into before you do that is really critically important. We'll, we'll explore those ideas in these next videos.
Father, just uh, this, these, are, these that are watching this, Father, I pray that you would just give them wisdom, give them discernment, give them patience, give them uh, uh, help to understand is, this, is, is the, the union to this person that they're contemplating, is it going to be of you? Is it going to work? Is it right? I pray that they listen to wise counsel. I pray, God, they listen to your word. I pray, God, that they pray this through till they have a peace that passes understanding. Thank you, God, for what you're going to do in this series. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, till next time.